8.3 is uh, talking about laws of logarithms found on pages 392 to 403 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate an understanding of logarithms, including evaluating logarithms, relating logarithms to exponents, which is what we're doing today, deriving laws of logarithms, which is what we're also doing today, and solving equations and graphing. Um, our lesson objectives for today, number one is to develop the laws of logarithms. Number two, to use the laws of logarithms to simplify logarithmic expressions. Number three, to apply the laws of logarithms to real life situations that use logarithmic scales. So just like we found with our exploration of trig functions, the distributive property doesn't work with logarithmic functions. So our example is to show that log 1000 times 100 is not the same thing as log 1000 times log 100. Well, log of 1000 times 100 can just be written as log of 100,000. And we know that if there's no um, base written within our log, that our base is 10. So we're being asking ourselves, what exponent do I give 10 to get 100,000? Well, that would just be 5. Now let's find this out. Log of 1,000 means what exponent do I give 10 to get 1,000? Well, that's 3. And I'm multiplying. And log of 100 is 2. And we, are now, we have now shown that 5 does not equal 6. So it shows that the logarithmic uh, function is not distributive. You can't just multiply log by 1,000 and log by 100. So for this reason, we need a set of laws that work with logarithmic expressions. And to truly understand these laws, a knowledge of our exponent laws, which we've really been working with since about grade nine, definitely helps. And like the exponent rules, these laws only work if you're working with the same base. So that's a key thing. We need to have the same base at all times. So our first law that we're going to talk about is called the product law. And in log terminology, it goes like this. If you have log of a base C of two numbers, M times N, then what you can do is change this into an adding question. So log C M plus log C N. So let's compare that to our exponent laws. Our exponent laws said that if we have two things of the same base, we add the exponents. Well, this is very similar. If we're multiplying two things, we add the exponents. Here, we're multiplying two things, so we're adding the logs. So this is how the exponent rules and the log rules are really the same thing. And you have to remember that when we're finding log of a number, so say we're finding log uh, 4, 16, we know the answer there is 2, because our answer is always the exponent that goes on the base. So these are two answers, they're two exponents. And the rule says that we add the exponents. So really the product law um, for logs and exponents, it's really the same thing. So let's just do a little example here. Log 2 of 16 times 4 should be the same thing as log 2 16 plus log 2 4. So we'll check it out. So log 2 16 times 4, well, 16 times 4 is actually 64. And that should be the same thing as log 2 16. So what exponent do I give 2 to get 16? And that answer is 4. And what exponent do I give 2 to get 4? Well, that answer is 2. So that is 6. And what exponent do I give 2 to get 64? That is also 6. So this is just sort of proving that this law works. Our second law is the quotient law. And in logs, it is stated like this, a log C of M divided by N. So if we have two things, we're taking the log of two things that are divided, means that we then subtract log of the, of the numerator minus log of the denominator. Notice that the base, which is C, goes with both of these uh, values, both with M and N. And this can be compared to our exponent rule for when we're dividing. Because when we're dividing with the same base, we have the same base with, with the logs as well, we then subtract the exponents. So really, they're the same law. So let's try it out. Log 3 of 81 divided by 9 should then be equal to log 381 minus log 39. Well, let's see. Um, log 381 divided by 9. Well, 81 divided by 9 is 9. A log 381 means what exponent do I give 3 to get 81? That answer is 4. And log 3, 9 is what exponent do I give 3 to get 9? That answer is 2. And log 3, 9 on this left-hand side is also 2. So 2 should equal to 4 minus 2, and that is true. So we've kind of just proven that this quotient law is also true.
And we have our final law, which is called the power law. So in logs, it's written like this. If we take log with the base C of a number that's raised to a power, P, then what happens is that that exponent is actually multiplied by the log of that number. Now in our exponent rule, this is written as so x to the a raised to the power of b means that we multiply the two things together and here we're multiplying two things together. So let's check it out. It says log 2 4 cubed should equal 3 log 2 4. Well on the left hand side if I go log 2 4 cubed let's uh, simplify that or change it a bit. So 4 is actually just 2 squared raised to the power of 3. So now I'm finding log 2 of 2 to the power of 6. So what exponent do I give 2 to get 2 to the power of 6? Well, that would be 6. On the right-hand side, I'm going to find log 2, 4. And so that means what exponent do I give 2 to get 4? Well, that is a 2. And so I also get a 6. So here's how the power law, and we've kind of shown that it works with a real situation. And hopefully you can understand these laws because we need to use them in some specific examples. So the first example is use your logarithm rules to rewrite or laws to rewrite each expression in terms of individual logs. So log 5 of root x y. Well the first thing we can do is get rid of that root sign because root signs aren't very uh, easy to work with so we will change that root sign to an exponent because that's what we've been talking about. So we can change that root to a, an exponent of a half. And knowing your exponent rules is really important for this sort of stuff. Now this last law that we talked about, the power law, says that if there's a half, we, will, we can move it in front. Turn this into a multiplying question. Now we also have two terms here. We have x and y. So we need to split that up as well. And our product law said that if we are multiplying two different things, or if we're taking the log of two things that are multiplied together, sorry, then we end up adding those things. So now we have a half log 5 x plus a half log 5 y. So what you need to really get used to is using these um, logarithmic laws or, or power rules or however you want to look at them because um, we're going to use these concepts to help us solve some equations in our next unit or next lesson, sorry. So knowing these laws is going to be really important. And our last one says log 7 of x to the fifth power times y divided by z, um, the square root of z. So again, we're going to just use our exponent laws or our power laws or our log laws um, to simplify this thing. So right off the bat, I have two things multiplied together and then something being divided. So my product law says that I add the two things that are being multiplied together and when I'm dividing, I actually subtract. So I can rewrite this to look like log 7x to the 5 plus log 7y plus log, oh, minus, sorry, because we're, we're dividing, log 7 of root z. Now, what we can do is take any exponent and move it in front. So that's 5 log 7x plus log 7y minus um, this square root, remember, is a half. So that would be a half log 7z. So we've got a couple more examples here. Um, we're going to use our logarithm rules to simplify and evaluate each, each expression. So here we have log 5, 1,000 minus log 5, 4 minus log 5, 2. Well, we can start um, combining these things because we have the same base in each case. So what we're doing is we're taking log 5 of 1,000. And because this is subtracting, we're actually going to divide the log. So that's 1,000 divided by 4. So I'll just do this step by step. So 1,000 divided by 4, that's log 5 of 1,000 divided by 4 is 250. Now we're still subtracting log 5, 2. So again, we can combine these logs and um, divide. So that's 250 divided by 2. So we end up with log 5 of 125. 
And quite often in one of these types of questions, you might be able to evaluate this thing. So what is what exponent do I give 5 to get 125? Well, the answer there is 3. 5 to the third power is 125. Our second example looks a little more complicated, but the, the same sort of rules apply. So these logarithm rules are important to get used to. So we've got 2 log 3, 6 minus a half log 3, 64 plus log 3, 2. So your best bet whenever you have numbers in front is to use our power rule and change that. So we got log 3, 6 squared, that means. We've got this half, which is really an exponent of a half, which makes that the square root of 64. And then we still have log 3, 2. Now we can start combining these things. When we have um, a subtracting, it means we're dividing with our logs. So that's log 3 of 6 squared, which is 36, divided by um, log 3 of root 64, which is just 8. So notice that when I'm combining these logs, I don't write log twice. I only have a single log. So that's log 3 of 36 divided by 8. Now we're also multiplying by log 3, 2 or sorry, adding log 3, 2. So if I want to combine these two logs now, that turns into log 3 of 36 times 2 divided by 8. And that is log 3 of 9. 36 times 2 is 72. 72 divided by 8 is 9. And what exponent do I give 3 to get 9? Well, that means my answer is 2. So knowing these logarithm rules means that you can simplify what looks like some hard questions into a more simpler question. So write each expression as a single logarithm in simplest form. State restrictions on the variable. So the thing that's changed now is that we don't have numbers in here, we have variables, so we're really just simplifying. Now, when it says state the restrictions, you need to remember one thing about logarithms. So if I said something like log 2 of negative 4, we've talked about how this cannot be evaluated because you can't give 2 an exponent to give you a negative answer. So when we have log 2x, the thing that you need to remember about restrictions is that this x, this variable, whatever comes after the log, cannot be negative. That's a big, uh, a big deal here. So we cannot have a negative number after the x. So we can't plug in values for x that are going to give us negative. So for the first case, that means our x is restricted. x cannot be uh, greater, or sorry, less than 0. Can it be equal to 0? Can I give something like log 2, can I give it an exponent to make it equal 0? And the answer to that is no, I can't. So not only can it not be negative, it cannot be 0 as well. So x has to, cannot be, uh, be, this is the wrong sign, x cannot be less than 0, so x has to be greater than 0, but not equal to. Okay, now we can get into the simplifying part. So this half, if you remember, is actually just an exponent, and this 4 is also an exponent. So we have log 3 of x to the 4th power minus, and in brackets here, log 3x plus 5 log 3x all raised to the power of a half. So we would do what we normally do inside the brackets in order of operations sort of thing before we subtract. We need to do what's inside the brackets. So we have log 3x plus 5 log 3x. Well, the first log 3x doesn't change, but I see this 5 and I should change that to an exponent. So now that is log 3 of x to the fifth power. When we're adding, that means we can combine these two logs and multiply them. And so that means when we multiply these things, we have log 3 of x times x to the fifth raised to the power of a half makes that log 3x to the fourth minus log 3x to the sixth power raised to a power of a half. So I get log 3x to the fourth minus log 3x to the sixth raised to a power of a half is log 3x cubed. 
and then I can subtract. When I'm subtracting log, sorry, I divide. So I have log three x to the fourth divided by um, x cubed. And I end up simplifying this whole expression into log three x. So you need to know your exponent rules, you need to know your logarithmic rules, and you can work through any sort of problem. So our second example is log two of x squared minus nine minus log two of x squared minus x minus six. Now I always suggest to do the restrictions first. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna do this a little bit different this time. I've got x squared minus nine. I know that this thing has to be greater than zero. So if I factor it, I get x minus three and x plus three has to be greater than zero. So what I think of, and this might be a good way to look at this sort of thing, is that I know this is a quadratic, and this is a quadratic that has two x-intercepts at, at positive three and negative three, and it looks something like this. So I know I cannot have a negative value, so I can't choose anything between negative three and positive three. So that means my restriction is that x has to be greater than three, but x can also be less than negative three. So there's the restrictions for that one. Over here with the x squared minus x minus six, if I were to, that also has to be greater than zero. If I were to factor that, I get x minus three and I get x plus two. That has to be greater than zero. So again, I have a, a parabola with two x-intercepts, one of negative two and one of positive three. And again, it's a parabola that opens up. So I know that my restrictions in this case are that x has to be greater than three again, and x is gonna be less than negative two. So after I found my restrictions, right there and right there, now I can start simplifying this thing. Well, because I'm subtracting, that means I'm actually gonna be dividing these logs together. So I'm gonna have this thing divided by that thing. Now I've already factored these things, so let's put them in in their factored form. And then as you'll see, some things cancel out. So the x minus threes will both cancel out. So I'm left with a simplified version of log two of x plus three divided by x plus two. And that is as good as it gets. Probably don't need this extra set of brackets in here. Now, let's take a look at my restrictions. Are any of these restrictions redundant? Well, my total restrictions, I've got x has to be greater than three in both these cases. So I can just write that once x is greater than three. And here I have, have x is less than negative three, but I also say that x is less than negative two. But since there's some values between negative three and negative two, I have to make sure that um, I don't include them. So x has to just be less than negative three. So in summary, uh, there are laws that govern how you can combine logarithmic expressions. And they are very similar to exponent laws and as such can only be used if you have a common base. So you have to remember that these things can only be used if you have the same base. You can use these laws to either expand an expression or simplify an expression. And they will be used to solve equations in our next lesson. So we don't have to use a guess and check method anymore. So it's really important to get familiar and comfortable with combining logarithms using the power rule, the product rule and the quotient rule. So your assignment is on pages 400 to 403. Good luck and we'll see you in class.